This building is the plumber's workshop, which was originally sited in Newark, in Sussex. A late 19th century building had a plumber's workshop on the ground floor and a glazier's workshop on the first floor. As you enter this workshop, it got, it's got that lovely sort of smell about a nice old wooden building. And you've got these rather lovely, sort of slightly frosted glass windows, so as not to distract the workers too much. Clear at the top, though. And the workshop's full of all these old Victorian plumbing fittings. So you've got things like a, a siphoning system there. A kettle, presumably, for the pots of tea, or maybe even the stove there for doing some softening. And then lots of lead working. Of course, all the plumbing work was done with lead, so you've got the lead beating hammers on the bench there and you've got some very nice formed pieces of lead. Of course, you wouldn't be using lead nowadays for your water supply due to health you know, concerns. My, one of the houses I lived in had a, a lead mains inlet and I can remember when I was doing bits of building work, always being a little bit worried about, is this going to sort of suddenly you know, break off? Because the, the lead pipe is obviously fairly soft and bends. But they've dressed this up very nicely. They've got a, a strap working, looking very respectable. You'd think he was going off to the office. And he's got this blow lamp for doing a bit of bending and it looks like he's soldering a screw thread on the end of a lead pipe there. So he's sweating his joints and getting them nice and neat. Always mind that with the old um, lead working on pipes. You'd get these like bulbous joins and they always look rather professional. On the bench, there are little boxwood cones for widening out bits of pipe so that you can make joints. And then you've got various, um, you've got ball punches to widen out little joins. And various other files and sort of tools to work the lead. You go around, it's quite a small little workshop really, I mean I wouldn't mind it, <laughs> but you've got a little pillar drill on the bench and obviously a little burner there for melting your lead. So that's all set up with a blow lamp to provide the heat source. On the ground there's a sand casting box, I guess they may have done a bit of sand casting of some of the more complicated parts. And up here are some rather wonderful bending springs. So you could bend a metal pipe, so a lead pipe or a copper pipe, using one of these, and you put it inside the pipe as you bent it, and it wouldn't kink as easily. And behind that there are various wrenches. Oh, no, sorry, those are cutters. They're pipe cutters. They've got little cutting wheels and down below are more lead working tools. It's actually quite dark in here and I've put a, a, a very sort of wide lens so the camera's actually picking up a bit more than I am. On the back wall I can see quite a few augers. And then going up it looks like those could be joist drills I think that's what they are for putting pipes through confined spaces. There's a ratchet system. I think those are, yes, they look like they are drill heads, putting drills in. So you could get your pipes you know, through the gaps between floor joists. And on the wall here, for the modern day visitor, we have a few of the plumber's tools. So, Dressers or lead beaters, setting in sticks, bossing sticks, you've got all sorts here, step turners. And you've got your blow lamps of various types. And there's another variant here for melting your lead. Wiping cloths, so when you um, do a nice solder joint, you want to be able to wipe it to make it look nice and smooth. And that's what those are. Yeah, those were the pipe cutters. 
Got various corking tools. Load of bending springs. And then we've got various soldering bits of kit. A smoke drain testing machine. Quite interesting, I suppose you fill up your drain with smoke and see where the smoke comes out. If you have a leak or not. And then fascinating, probably patented items, such as the squirrel tail pipe jointers. That's an art in itself. You realise, when you look at something like all of this, just sort of how people would learn their trade and get familiar with all these tools. It's wonderful, really. So, thanks to the Weald and Downland Museum, I should say the Living Museum, they've recreated this lovely display for us to have a look at. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little insight. At the museum, there are actually quite a lot of buildings they've put up. Uh, well, they've moved them, they rescued them, so this one's been rescued from Newark. And um, they've reassembled them on site. So it's great they're doing this sort of work. Anyway, hope you enjoyed watching that one. See you in the next one.